Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna talk about overload protection for production machines. And helping me out is Dave Simak. He is with US Subaki, makers of uh, roller chain, engineered chain, cable carriers, and also power transmission products. Am I right, Dave? You are correct. Hey, awesome, it's great to have you back on the show. What have we got here? I see a little bit of a machine. I see some stuff over here. What are we gonna talk about today? Thanks, Tom. Today we're going to discuss one of the options to protect equipment from the unexpected and the unpredictable. So while everyone wishes it wasn't so, sooner or later something always happens that shouldn't and production grinds to a halt. Ah, and when production grinds to a halt, we all lose money. Not good. So Dave, I want you to help me. I want to reduce downtime in my plant. Help me today. So exactly, Tom. Today we will discuss an electronic way to protect the mechanical components used in production from damage. All right. Well, before we start, we got to do a little PPE, which is personal protective equipment. Make sure you wear the right PPE for your job. Okay, let's talk about what we got here today from U.S. Subaki. So ideally, manufacturing proceeds along day after day without a misstep. Right. So every box gets placed nicely on the palletizer. Right. The screw conveyor is never overloaded. Never. And a piece of angle iron never ends up in the shredder. <laughs> never. But that's not reality, is it, Dave? No, it's not. And, you know, when the unexpected happens, too often the result is downtime, machinery repair, and product not being shipped on time, and you lose money. Yeah. So, unfortunately, many manufacturing facilities recognize a jammer or a problem the wrong way. So most commonly is the operator visually seeing product being crushed or ending up on the floor. And by the time that problem is seen, it's already too late. Yeah, and if the operator happened to walk away during the time the problem occurs, well, what happens? Well, the damage is not immediately identified. Am I right? You are correct. Yeah. And, and, you know, and this runs the risk for the damage or the problem area to grow very quickly. So before it's being identified and resolved, a uh, second popular way to detect the machine problem is when a circuit breaker trips. It's important to understand that fuses and circuit breakers are designed to protect electrical components from too much amperage draw. And that amperage draw generates heat, which in turn could lead to a short or a fire. So fuses and circuit breakers are not designed to protect mechanical components. Okay, well, if it's not best to rely on those, then what are the options to protect the machinery itself from jams? Well, traditionally, OEMs and end users install torque limiting devices into the mechanical equipment to protect it. Okay. Um, so, you know, these, these types of devices do protect the, the equipment from mechanical overloads. Um, the problem with these devices is that they may not react quick enough, and they also have to be physically reset to resume production. So a relatively new device that came out and was used in the water treatment industry is the Sabaki Shock Relay. Uh, the, the core function on, and the intent of the shock relay is to protect the mechanical components from damage. So there are three features unique to the shock relay that make this possible. Okay, uh, well show me how this works so we can protect these mechanical components from damage. So in looking at the shock relay and how it functions, there's three given parameters that are set up in the device to protect equipment. The first is the start time. So the start time allows the equipment to start from a dead stop uh, the electric motor draws more amperage at that point to get the equipment moving. Um, so it bypasses that and allows the equipment to move. Kind of like Uncle Phil's pacemaker in the morning. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> exactly. much the same way. Exactly. Okay, what's up next? So the next thing is the max current setting or value. So this sets the maximum amount of load the equipment can take without breaking. Caps it so it doesn't lead to any mechanical problems. Absolutely, okay. that's correct. All right. And then the last setting is the shock time setting. So what this setting does is it sets the maximum amount of time the equipment can work at its maximum current limit uh, mm -hmm. and then okay. shuts it off accordingly in the event that that time is exceeded. So this, this device is designed from the start to protect mechanical components. Once set, the trip point remains consistent day after day, and just running in the background, monitoring equipment to protect against the unforeseeable. Well, what about installation of something like this, though? Well, installation is fairly easy. How this thing is installed is it's put in the electrical control cabinet, and it's tied into the three main leads that go to the electric motor. So once it's installed and set up, the operation continues, it runs, and if a problem does occur, the motor contacts for the electric motor are broken, which in turn kills the equipment. Dave, what do we see here? This is kind of like a Rorschach test for robots. <laughs> Tell me what you see right here. Well, I see a lot of, uh, 
a lot of circuit breakers mm -hmm. and uh, contacts, things of that nature that ultimately control the the equipment and if it's running or if it's shut down. I was kind of hoping he'd say Robbie the robot. Yeah. Hey, what types of applications are we going to be using with this new Sabaki shock relay? So these are really popular in bulk material handling applications, mm -hmm. bucket elevators, conveyor systems, packaging equipment. Um, so that's the type of equipment that you're going to see this in. And, and too often businesses lose productivity due to the fact that the machine goes down for an unforeseen problem. So the shock really offers an option that can repay itself the first time a jam occurs. All right, well, let's see it in action. I know you got a little machine here. We're going to turn it on. Explain what we're going to see here. So I'm going to start the motor driving. Okay. And you'll see that it read a higher amperage upon startup to get the motor moving. Right. Now it's in a steady state condition at 0.8 amps. Okay, now what do you have this set at to trip? I set this shock relay about 25% over the steady state amperage, so it should trip about 1.10 amps or okay. 1.07 amps. Oh, I see you're putting strain on the motor right there. Yep. Oh, 1.1. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right there. So that's about 25%. Exactly. So when you saw it tripped, this red light came on. Uh -huh. That would indicate a warning in a control cabinet or a light on the machinery, and that would tell someone that, hey, there's a problem the machine has been overloaded. And then each time it would be that 25%. Once it reaches that limit, that's the cap we talk about, so there's no additional problems. Yes. And, and then to reset this, all you have to do is push the reset button, and you're back up and running again. Well, that's good. Well, let's stop it. There we go. Dave Simak from U.S. Subaki, thank you so much. Great thank information you. right there. Appreciate it. Hey, if you have any questions about anything you saw here today, don't forget to contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. Hopefully, this will help you with your practical application once you have one of these installed. And uh, I installed my PPE, personal protective equipment, early on. Make sure you wear the right PPE for whatever the job calls for. And also make sure that you catch other how-to videos from Motion Industries with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks so much for watching today.